Hello there once again. Today, somebody had said, you haven't covered any Midland sets. Well, we've only been doing this a month on the videos. And here we are, we unbox this today, and a very dusty, let's see if we can get the light on the dust, Maxcom 4E, with original mic has come in, which is the same chassis as the Midland. The Midland 2001, 3001, 4001 used this same Maxon chassis from Korea. This has come with a stub of a power lead, and it's the old thing, do we repair the power lead and put an inline fuse holder in, which is vital, or do we sell them a new power lead? Well, it's cheaper to sell them a new power lead, so we'll just chuck that to one side. And the other thing which we will do before I catch something off this radio is to use the service hall foam cleanser. I will just give it a quick clean down because it's pretty yucky. I'll go through the mic and I'll pause the video while I take the lids off. Okay, putting the video back on to record. I've taken the screws out, but I promise you I haven't looked inside it. Connected up to the test equipment. This is just as it's coming to me. Now what we do have is a photocopy of the original instruction book. And in the original instruction book, not only did you get the circuit diagram, but you got the full engineering thing for everything on the um, servicing of these sets. So this is something that Maxon always seem to do, and it's jolly good. It's useful 30 years down the line. Date on the back, January 1982. I'm not going to power it up yet. We'll just open it up. Well, that looks uh, pristine. And there's no nasty surprises inside there either. So I'll just unsold the speaker lid. There's nothing worse than having that floating around the workshop. Right, so switch it on. Light on. We'll select channel 20. Which clearly receiving because uh, I've got the signal generator on. So we'll proceed now with what the manual says to set the VCO. Okay, having looked at the service information, put the test meter uh, somewhere suitable. And the test point, we'll just zoom in on that for you. to move a little bit of wax to show you this O one one six is the VCO coil and the VCO test point is there to come away from the chassis so I'll just get the old crocodile clip on the job. Now whether or not we'll be able to read it through this board or whether we're going to have to read it from underneath is another matter. I think my uh, test prod is, is fine enough to to read it this side of the board I'm afraid. to read it from this side of the board. Right, I need to select channel 40 and check that we're somewhere around about two and a half volts. Going to transmit. Yes. I'll check it's unlock on channel one. I 
I've lost my point now. And we're in lock on channel one as well. So basically you're looking at somewhere between just under two to four volts on the VCO. Now we've got no reason to believe this radio is out of lock, but that is the procedure if you came up to one, which it was. So it's uh, checking on that test point. If you've got to find a test prod, you should be able to read it through the, the test point as I showed you on the top of the printer table, but I've had to go and hunt for it on the other side. Um, and then it's a matter of adjusting L116, which has got wax in it. So I've no reason to suspect this is um, out and it reads as it should do. So that's the VCO. Now we're going to transmit and make sure the radio is in high power which it is, which is the 4 watt mode and the first coil for transmit is 107 and 107 is that one there Okay. now why can't I feel that? probably because it's got wax in it peak that this radio incidentally is working out I'll just do an accurate reading for you it's doing 2.9 watts as it's coming onto the bench for service I think these are quite capable of four unlike some sets like the Fidelity's uh, great chassis which you're looking to get two and a half out of remember I'm talking real watts not um, CB watts which these meters this CB seem to buy seems to be rather generous and watts reads probably three watts on my test set here it probably reads five good buddy watts the next one is number is the second one there for transmit is 109 not 108 108 is that one 109 is the second one in the lineup and I've peaked that there's no nothing gained then we go for 108 very slight alteration there and the fourth one is L110 which is the open coil there again nothing gained and then we move on to L111 which is the coil there which has wax in it so we'll just deal with that and hopefully the yellow tool will fit in there it does. Yes, that's uh, that's brought it up to 3.8 watts. And then finally, L115. Now there's two in between which I'll talk to you about. L115 is in that screen plate there, just where the aerial socket is. And the radio will go well beyond four watts, and we've now set it at four. I'll just seal those back up, just so that they they're nice and neat. If you're struggling to get four watts, you can expand or contract that coil, which is one one two, and you can expand and contract that coil, which is one one three. That's what it says in the book. So I'm happy that that's doing the proper power. While we'll go for the low power, because this is an MPT1320 specification radio, it has the 10 decibel attenuator switch, to, and so that knocks it down to 0 0.4 of a watt. So we'll just key up the radio and see what it is reading. And the answer is... It sounds like a quiz show, doesn't it? And the answer is... 530 milliwatts. Well, that's too high. So, it's the... Adjustment for uh, is RV102, which is just there. We'll just pop that down a fraction. There we go, 0 0.4 of a watt, which is exactly what we're looking for. We'll switch it back to high power, and now we'll do the RF meter on the front. Right, let's see what... Um, I can't really refocus the camera for this. I'll key up, and it's gone right across to peg the needle. Well, that's no good at all, because into the dummy load in the test set it should be reading 4 watts corresponding with what we've got the power set at the RF meter adjustment 
is the preset just here which is RV103 so I'll just now kind of tilt the radio so I can see it whilst putting the tool into the trimmer there I now have that on for Right, that covers the setup for the transmitter, but we just need to make sure it's on frequency. So we've brought the power up from 2.9 watts to 4 watts. We've got to do the deviation. We've got to check it's on frequency. So I we'll think we'll do the deviation next. I'll get the little oscillator out. Oh dear, that's very low. Um, should be two and a half the deviation, and we're looking at 0 0.6. So that's going to be very, very quiet indeed. Unless, of course, the mic's faulty, but we'll find out in a moment. Deviation is RV105, and RV105 is just there. and that's actually come straight up. Switch the oscillator off, give it the whistle test. Wallow. Wallow. It's just gone, it's just a bit too high on the whistle test, so we'll just fractionally knock it off a, fra a bit. Wallow. Wallow, that's it. And I'm gonna just listen on the monitor receiver. Just in case the mic leaves rustily. One, two, one, two. Testing one, two, one, two. Yeah, that's absolutely fine. Now, these radios came with a two year warranty at the time, and the joke was that the mics had a two minute warranty, but surprisingly, this one's lasted 30 years and the mic lead isn't even rustily. Some of you may see the Super 4E. The difference is it came with two power leads and a green display. So if you come up against a, a Super 4E, it's exactly the same radio. But it, as I say, it's got the uh, the green display, which is rather nice. So we've done the deviation, and we just now check it's on frequency. So it should be twenty seven decimal seven nine one two five on channel twenty. Now we're getting a false reading for some reason, so I'll just come back to this. Right, there was a slight snag there. It wasn't coming up with the uh, correct frequency on the uh, meter. And the reason for it is I've had to put the bottom lid temporarily on. It's because of stray capacitance. So what I've just done, I didn't realise this happened with these. It's certainly doing it on this particular set. Is um, When you run through these transmit um, adjustments, just make sure the bottom lid's on. I think it's reading my leg or something uh, through the bench. Don't often get that happening, but it just seems to be a good precaution on this particular set. So it's now spot on, and we were just going to check the frequency, which is where we were. Now it should be 27.79125. It's 27.79127, so that doesn't need adjustment on this particular set. However, if it did, the trimmer capacitor for that... ...is just there. You've got the... Synthesizer chip, the Sanyo LC71, sorry, you've got the MC3357 IF subsystem chip, you've got the quartz crystal there, and then you've got the trimmer capacitor just under that wiring. I'll just tilt the set slightly, and that is the frequency adjust, and I'll be using the yellow RS tool that I use. And that concludes the transmitter. The next video will be on the receiver.